Flamingo. What is going on, my friends? My name's McKinsey, and this is the Flamingo Show, where I talk about what's going on in the world of Webflow. All right, let's kick things off with a small little feature update to Webflow. So an agency by the name of 930 tweeted out the other day that they noticed Webflow added preloading, which is a small but super useful feature. So what this means is that on pages that you're pretty sure the user is going to click on and go to, you can go preload all the assets. So when they do click that link, every Everything happens in a snap super quick without any load time so you do want to use this with caution so you don't have your user download a bunch of assets for links that they might not click on but if there's something important uh, I do recommend turning this on I really love that they added this I personally use this for Flamingo discover so if somebody lands on my home page it'll preload the assets on Flamingo Discover before they click the link in the header, just because that page is a little bit heavier and by doing so, it, it makes it feel a little bit snappier. All right, next up, Kevin Hogg created a Chrome extension called Code Mode for Webflow. And what this does is when it's clicked, it opens up the code editor for the page that you're on full screen. So it makes working with code a little bit nicer and it reduces the friction to getting to the code. So instead of having to click on the pages panel, click on the page of settings, and then scroll down to the bottom to get to the code section. You just click a button and it pops open and you can start coding right away. So if you do a lot of custom code in your Webflow projects, definitely go check this one out. I will, of course, put a link to this in the description below. All right, next up, I want to talk about Blush by Pablo Stanley. So this isn't a Webflow site, but it is very handy for your Webflow projects. So Blush is a tool that you can use to create and customize illustrations for your websites. So it features illustrations by a number of different artists. The awesome thing about Blush is you can mix and match different uh, elements in the illustration. So you can swap out people and, and other various elements throughout the illustration, as well as colors and such to make it unique for your site. So Blush has both Sketch and Figma plugins if you work directly in there, or you can use their web app and you can create whatever illustrations you want and use them as uh, medium resolution PNGs for free, or it's only like 15 bucks a month if you want the high resolution PNGs or SVGs. So if you need some illustration stuff for your website, highly recommend this. You can go to blush.design to check this one out. All right, next up we have Notion 4, which is a curation site of Notion templates for various use cases. So this one was created by Cole Ryan, who actually created the cause.work job board that I featured in episode three. So besides Webflow, Notion is my favorite tool. So this is a cool project to see. If you wanna get some inspiration for your Notion docs, definitely go check this one out. It's notion4.co. All right, next up, Moritz Peterson actually rebuilt the iPhone 12 Pro landing page in Webflow. It's really cool to see that you can build stuff like this in Webflow. And this actually isn't his first Apple rebuild. He's also built the AirPod Pro landing pages and I believe another iPhone page. And if you're curious how he goes about building this, he actually did a full tutorial teaching how to build the AirPod Pro landing page on his YouTube channel, which I'll of course add a link to that tutorial tutorial down in the description. But if you want to check out his rebuild, go to iPhone-12-Pro.Webflow.io. Okay, I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Traff. He's the co-creator of Super, which allows you to turn your Notion sites into websites. Here's a little snippet from that chat. Yeah, I think I think the potential is there. I think there's enough people, you know, using the internet and using, you know, digital products and paying for things online that anyone can make a living and a lifestyle doing what they enjoy. You know, I think everyone even watching this has something that they do that they enjoy doing, whether it be, you know, cooking or, or video games or chess mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And I, and I think there's a market for almost everything, which means there's almost always a way to make money doing what you enjoy. Uh, you just yeah. have to, you know, figure out the best medium to fulfill uh, on your skill set, really. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm saying this in a way that sounds as if it's easy. It's not easy, but it is rewarding. All right, if you're interested in watching that full chat, that's going to be released in a few days on this channel, so check back for that. All right, next up we have Josh Newton's portfolio. Overall, this site is pretty minimal. There's not much going on with it, but it's packed full of personality. The site is called No One Is Watching Me. So Josh's 
logo mascot is a set of eyes. So that's actually what he uses as his avatar on Twitter and such. And he built that into his Webflow site, but it's pretty cool because the eyes follow your cursor around. So as you move around the site, the eyes will follow the direction of your mouse. And then it has this cool hover effect for the projects that he's worked on. So very nice work on this, Josh. I really dig your site. If you want to check this one out, go to no one's watching me. All right. Another portfolio site is by Corey Moen. I really like Corey's site because of how he built the projects. As you scroll down and go through the different projects, uh, the background color changes and the image changes, and it looks like it kind of like sits on top of each other. And then I really love the logo he used. When you hover over it, it shows all the different Memojis, which just gives the site a little bit of personality. So if you want to check out his portfolio, go to CoreyMowen.com. All right, another cool site that I came across by Anna Sabatini and Romy Misra is speaktech.webflow.io. So this is a very simple Webflow site that teaches people the lingo of tech. So things like API, authentication, browser, cache, cookie, uh, stuff like that. So when you click on any of these, a little description of what the word means pops up. This is super useful for people who don't know much about tech, but are in the tech industry and need to understand the lingo. I would like to see a search box on this site. I think that would be super useful for people. Anna and Romy, really nice work on this. I think this is gonna be super useful for a lot of people. If you wanna check this one out, go to speaktech.webflow.io. All right, a cool one that I came across was called Weather and Calendar. And this one was by Andreas Anderson. And he built this site in Webflow using the help of custom code. But what it does is when you land on the site, it detects your location or you have the option to enter a different location. You click Celsius or Fahrenheit and then add to calendar and it will add the next 16 days forecast to your Google or Apple calendar. That way you can see what the weather is going to be like at a glance. So this one's super cool. If you want to check this out, go to weather-in-calendar.webflow.io. All right, next up we have a cool clonable by Sketch Lab. So this is set up using two different Webflow slider elements. One looks like an actual slider and one just looks like the background of the homepage. And then when you click on the button, it triggers both of them to switch. And then the background changes to show different content and videos. So if you wanna check this one out, go to custom-double-slider.webflow.io and I'll add a link to clone this one in the description below. All right, last up, we have a cool clonable by webdev for you And what this is, it's a slider time animation. So this animation reveals the stroke of different shapes as the slider is in view. And then once the shapes are loaded, it goes to the next slide. And I believe this is done by using the slider component with some Lottie files. And real quick, before you wrap up, I just want to give a shout out to webdev for you so they have created nearly 150 different interactions that you can clone. And actually for only like 12 bucks a month, you can get access to all their tutorials teaching how they build each of their clonables. And then they offer different templates and stuff as well. But definitely go check out their stuff. They have so many cool interactions. To check this one out, go to webdevforyou.com. All right, that is all for this episode. As always, if you come across anything cool or if you're building something cool yourself, using Webflow. You can tag me or DM me on Twitter. I'm at McKinsey Child or go to flamingo.co slash discover to submit a link. But that is all for this one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Flamingo.